Cloudera Navigator Audit Server provides a single location to store user activity across the cluster, including events from Cloudera Manager Services. From the Navigator console, you can view, filter, and build reports on this audit data. Each service writes events to a log file. The Cloudera Manager agent on the host tails the log and passes events to the Navigator Audit Server, which stores them in a local database. The Navigator Metadata Server makes these events accessible through the Navigator console and through the Navigator API. When you have Navigator enabled and running in Cloudera Manager, the audit system runs right out of the box. Auditing is enabled for all supported services by default. You get 90 days of audit events retained in the Navigator Audit database. Built-in filters reduce the volume of server-to-server -server events audited for HDFS, Hive, and HBase. It's a good idea to review your audit system to make sure it's running efficiently. To make the most of your audit data, consider what audit events you are collecting. It's possible you can filter out events that you don't need. How long are you retaining audit events in Navigator? The longer the events stay, the larger the Navigator database volume. How are you archiving audit events? Can you get to your archive data when you need it? Navigator captures events produced by Cloudera Manager Services. HDFS, HBase, and Hive have predefined filters that control the audit events that these services provide. As part of your audit checkup, look for common audit events by user and by operation. Review the predefined filters and make sure they're doing what you expect. You might also consider adding filters to eliminate events that don't add value for you. You can review the audit events directly through the Navigator console to get a feel for what's tracked. You can also run some queries against the database itself. After you log into the database as a privileged user, show the databases and look for the Navigator database. The audit tables include a table for each service and for each day of auditing. To see the most common users and operations, choose a table and run a query against it. You can see that the sys user in this example performed a large number of HDFS operations. Looking at tables for other days, you may see patterns among users who perform large numbers of operations. Now that we know something about the most common audit events, let's review the default filters and see if they're doing what we expect. To see the audit filters for a service, go to that service's configuration page and search for audit. Here we're reviewing the filters for HDFS. The first filter is designed to discard redundant HDFS events for service operations. These events are discarded in favor of more descriptive events produced by the services themselves. For example, Hive audits include events for queries against a table, so this filter removes the nine HDFS events also generated by a query. For this filter to work, your service role names must match the values specified in the filter. The second filter is designed to discard the large volume of list and describe events performed by the HDFS superuser. These events track access to file and directory metadata, as in ls directory commands. Almost every action on the cluster produces one or more of these events in addition to specific events tracked for the operation. As you saw in the previous examples, superuser activity can produce very large volumes of events that may not add value to your audit system. For this filter to work, make sure that your HDFS superuser name matches the name in the filter. The third and fourth filters discard hue user events that are generated when Cloudera Manager runs the Hive Metastore health test. The final filter discards HDFS operations performed under slash temp. After you review the events your system creates, you may find that you have events that don't contribute to your audit requirements. You can add filters to avoid collecting those events. 
For example, HDFS get file info operations account for a large percentage of HDFS audits. You could significantly reduce the audit volume in your database by filtering out these events that track access to file metadata and not to data. Navigator retains audit events for a fixed amount of time, and then they are discarded from the database. To determine how long to retain audit events in Navigator, consider the volume of events the system is producing, how much space on the disk the database can use, and how your customers are using audit events. If your users are active with the audit reports from Navigator Console, you may be able to tighten up what you collect so you can retain the events longer without swelling the size of your database. For your audit checkup, calculate the volume of events your system is producing so you know how much it's growing over time. Here's some examples of queries you can run against the audit database, starting by showing the size of all the audit tables for a given date. Then you can calculate the total size for audits from all services for that date. Adding a filter on the table names allows you to show the audit totals across all dates. To predict the size of the audit database, take the day with the largest volume of audits and multiply it by the days in the expiration period. For this database, a good estimate of the disk space needed for the audit database would be 5 gigabytes times 90 days, or about 450 gigabytes. Assuming the volume of events produced in your system is pretty constant, you can control the audit volume by setting how long Navigator retains these events. Set this value in Cloudera Manager in the Navigator Audit Server Data Expiration Period. The default value is 90 days. Now that you have a plan for saving only the events you need for only as long as you need them, the remaining audit checkup is about archiving audit events. Archiving solutions balance how easy it is to access the archived data, how to handle the scale of audits that you have, and how much effort you can spend developing your archiving system. The options available for integrating Navigator with an archiving system include using the Navigator API, streaming events to a messaging or log system such as Kafka, making database backups, or using Scoop to store the database content in HDFS. These solutions vary in ease of access, scalability, and implementation effort. As you can see from this comparison, creating a database backup is the easiest to implement. At the very least, this method can ensure you have audit data when you need it. Streaming and Scoop to HDFS provide much improved access to the archived data, but also require more development time. As part of an audit checkup, make sure you have some sort of archiving in place to meet your organization's requirements, and don't wait until you have an urgent request before you document how to access the archived data. To make the most of your audit system, validate that the default filters properly control what's coming into the system. Know how to set your expiration period so you can manage the audit database size easily. Prepare for the unexpected by archiving audits appropriately. There's more information about all of these points in the documentation at cloudera.com.